Hi everyone, welcome back to our channel. It is a Tribe Called Dylan podcast. I'm Angie Dylan, And I'm Rose Dylan, And I'm Alvin Dylan. And guess what? You are in for a super duper treat. Uh, by now, you kind of know that we love to celebrate. We're a family uh, and a tight-knit group that loves celebration. And guess what? Today's episode just happens to be... Yep, I'm going to play it. Today's one of those episodes. It's a celebratory episode because yours truly, Rose Dillon, passed the PMP exam. That's pretty huge for the first time. Thanks, guys. Let's do it. Let's do a dance. It's a celebration. Celebrate good times. Come on. Yeah. So that's right. Oh, We're going to be celebrating on today's episode. So welcome back. Like I said, it is a Tribe Called Dylan podcast. Today we are super stoked. The energy is just vibrating. I'm a super proud big sister. Not sure if you uh, heard Rose's uh, challenge to herself in one of our episodes. Probably about a month ago, she said that she was going to challenge herself and go and write the PNP exam. She sure did it. Not only did she kill it, she conquered it and she's gonna talk about it today. So for those of you that are contemplating or you're thinking about writing the PNP exam, or let's just say you did write the PNP exam and you didn't pass on the first try for some people it might be their second or their third try. Rose is gonna give you the lowdown today on everything that you need to know her studying preparation and how she basically crushed it. But before we get into that, we're going to get into our win of the week segment. So I think let's go over to you. Rose. Okay. Well, Woo. yeah, of course the PMP is my big win, but that's, we're going to get into that after. Cause I have another win to share with everyone. Okay. Ready? Yep. Okay. Turn this thing on. Ooh. Ooh. Okay. Ah. Um, so we, um, you know, after the, writing the exam, I was just like, I need a day of fun. And so big sister and younger brother came over and we went and had a day of Wait, like, did we come over? You got to tell my story. Home. I don't want to say the city, so I'm not going to say where I live, but just, we crossed the border, we crossed the border into good old America. And uh, we went and had a day of arcades. We played the basketball game. We played uh, air hockey. We did all these fun things. And at the end of the arcade, we had like this little card and we're like, just step on here. What do we do? And she's like, oh, these are your points. You get to collect it for um, a gift here. So Al picked this thing and we brought it home. I was like, this is so neat. It just lights up in all these fun, cool colors. And the reason I want to bring this up as a win is because Al's like, you know, this is how fiber optic is made. I was like, what? So Al, I want you to kind of explain to viewers, this is why girls, you need a brother or a boyfriend or someone to always help you understand things like this that I would not have known. So this thing changes colors, yep. right? Yep. As you can see right now, and from red to blue. Yeah. So Al, uh, and now it's going to, oh, orange. Tell us about yeah, this, Al. So it, it's not about the color. The colors are just changing on its own, but the, the basis behind it is, so you, everyone hears about high speed internet that we all have. And usually the faster you get, they'll say, oh, do you have fiber come into your house? Yeah. So people always wonder, oh, what is fiber? Basically, before fiber came out, it's been on for a long time, but is the basics were always copper wire, so they could only go so fast and they were kind of had some limitations as far as the frequencies and whatnot. So with fiber, fiber essentially is like what people look at it, they just see a wire, but what's inside the wire is a very thin piece of glass. It's not plastic, it's actually glass. If you ever see a fiber, they literally have a thing that just pulls a string just long enough so before it breaks. So if you actually ever take a fiber optic cable, and if you actually just completely bend it, you'll break the cable inside. Oh. If you actually squish it, it's not like copper where you can bend it and kind of bend it back. So this basically is kind of giving you like a visual of how the internet or the, the signal travels down the pipe. So the signal is at the bottom picture. That's your internet. Yeah. How are we getting to the end? This is like basically it's transmission line and you can only see, you don't see the light in the middle here, right? Right. You don't mm -hmm. see it traveling. Yeah. You only see it on the tip. So it's actually faster than copper. So it travels, picture this, it's transmitting your signal and your signal is being received on the end. That's where you see the light. Mm, oh so the light is essentially just a signal. Like you can be, have an internet, it can be audio, it can be anything, but that's essentially what your what Isn't fiber that optic so is. Neat? I know, and, so I, cool. and I love this. So when I first got my job, I'm an IT project manager. I called my brother and I was like, Al, um, what's single mode fiber and what's multi-mode fiber? And he's like, 
why are you asking this? I'm like, I have to go on site. I don't know these things. And I got myself into a job where, um, bless my boss. She said, just fake it till you make it. <laughs> and so I did it. Thank God for having an IT brother. He's like helped me through my entire career. So, um, this kind of stuff I love. I just love it. So basically much. Al was doing the job remotely, but basically. you were getting paid for mm-hmm. it. Basically. Oh, she was basically mm-hmm. subcontracting it out without <laughs> yeah. the pay, just like your typical corporation. <laughs> <laughs> I was paid. Oh, she yeah. was she was getting all the rewards, but I was doing all the work. Yeah, they were really impressed with me. Like, why wow, you know all them? Like, yeah, I know the Cat Five and Cat Six cables now. I know what Ethernet over multimode is. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, thank God for my brother. That's amazing. <laughs> Good stuff, Al. Let's get into your win of the week. Uh, that's actually I'm get kind ready of for mine. It's actually, an, I guess, a continuation of my win. So I started this supplement called AG One about a month and a half ago. So first weekend, I was like, oh, it's not bad. I'm seeing kind of benefits, but it's really gross. Like, it tastes nasty. I so like then finally it. the second week I was like, okay, I'm going to go to like every other day, but I don't like, like, I'm not hungry in the morning. So I was like, okay, I'm going to have a busy day today. I need to have like some fuel cause I probably won't eat lunch maybe till like two or three o'clock. So then I was like, I took it again. And then I felt like by the end of the day too, I was like, oh, I still got energy. I'm hungry, but I still got the energy. I'm not getting that headache feeling. So then finally third week and it's like something I just started feeling differently where I was like, this is interesting. I'm looking at things. I'm more focused and I'm more focused. I'm talking like 9 a.m. in the morning. Usually my general rule of thumb is like, like you're going to get errors from me up till about 10 a.m. And then things like level errors, up. You mean errors? Errors mean by like, if you send me an email. email and I reply back to it, I'll spell check it. I'll double check it, but I won't see that it's missing keywords because I just don't see it and mm-hmm. brains have to sleep. So then finally by the fourth week, I was like, holy shit, something's going on. This is amazing. My energy level is different. I'm not eating breakfast. It's been replacing my meal, replacing my multivitamin, replacing the probiotics. So I've been on it for over a month now. I don't, I haven't taken any vitamins, probiotics, eliminated all that. There was times where I thought maybe I was getting sick and I would take AG1 and literally like sore throat gone away. That happened yesterday and two weeks ago, same thing. And I was like, there's something to this. So now I kind of sacrificed the shit taste for the benefits of what I get out of it. And I highly recommend it because like, I won't, like, I know if I won't be able to eat today, I'll be like, I'll take AG1. I'll be fine. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's amazing. Yeah. Good. I'm Very amazing. It's all yeah. worth the money. Yeah. Good for you, Al. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. Uh, I want to make sure I get my win right here. So I just discovered this. Uh, and I think uh, we might do an episode uh, on this topic as well. So I just discovered that not only do I share the same birthday with Sylvester Stallone, <laughs> but I also share the same birthday with the 14th Dalai Lama. No oh, way. Wow. wow. Yeah, very I cool. I know. Look it up. I'm going to show you both. Um, I'm not sure if you, anybody can beat my birthday. Let's be real, though. That's true. I know, but the Dalai Lama is so cool. July 6th, 1935. Wow. He's 88 years old. Oh, he's 88. Good for him. Yes. Wow. So that was my win. That was a, a really cool discovery. That's and I think I'm going to do an episode on all of us and like who uh, who do we share the same birthday with that's a great one right mm, yeah. I would just like cool. to know and, and maybe do a one with left hand and right hand because when I got used to get made fun of my left hand yeah. I went down this whole thing of finding every celebrity who is left handed so if someone ever said anything to me I'm like yeah Barack Obama is left handed so is Oprah and they were like, that's weird. But I felt this need to like, always, and so was Julia Roberts. Like I felt this need to be like, mm-hmm. yeah, you know, the great ones are. <laughs> um, I know Julia Roberts and Obama, but I didn't know Oprah. Yeah, Oprah. Left- oh, yeah. That's very interesting. Mm-hmm. They say that left handed people are like very lucky. There's like 50 people, but what I did is I, my mind went and chose the people that I could like uh, gravitate towards. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, we're, let's get into uh, this episode, which is how I passed the PMP exam on the first try. Wait. Before you start, yes. you should explain to people what is PMP. Yeah, right. But and before what... we get into it here, I forgot. I got super excited and I forgot to pass this on to Rose while we were doing the celebration part. Like, see, this is what happens sometimes. We get all excited because <laughs> it is a party. It is like when anytime we do something or we pass something or we score something in our family, we always have a party. And so we are going to have a little mini party. So Rose, I pulled this out of our uh, box once again for you. <laughs> Oh God! Mm, and I forgot to tricks. give it to you in our intro. Party's here. <laughs> Would you like I to? I love it. I so, will wear it because you know you what? Can wear for a you little while. really just um, motivated me even more and today to give you guys great your... energy. I'm yeah, gonna be I giving you. I forgot to give that to you during the segue. I got no, excited. No, that's great. Thanks, but oh well. Ange. But it's our channel. We can do whatever we exactly. want. Exactly. Impromptu. Okay, let me put my phone away. Okay. Okay. And I turned off my ringer so no one's gonna accidentally call. Rose, it's such a big. Uh, it's an amazing feeling. It's a huge relief. Let's talk about all this. First of all, what does PMP stand for? Project Management Professional. So um, it's really funny because I, I was like, you know, I could change to PIMP, Project Management Institute Professional, and just call myself a pimp. 
Doesn't that sound so much cooler? And then cool. I can have the 50 Cent song, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I was like, we could just add a little extra to it and rephrase and rebrand that negative word into something more fun and great because, yeah. So PMP is Project Management Professional. Um, there's an institution called PMI that you can go through. And once you get certified, um, it's the only organization I think in the entire world that um, certifies you to be a project manager. So you can take courses um, throughout, you know, any any school offers it. But to have that actual certification, and it's an upkeep. It's not like a one time you're mm-hmm. done. Every year you've got to take X amount of hours of courses to keep up with that certification. Otherwise, in three years it expires and it's oh, no longer. Okay. You got to redo the exam again. And given how hard and stressful that exam was, I don't want to do that again. So yeah. I'm going to keep up with my mm-hmm. hours. That's why I was Good. still shocked that you passed on your first try. Yeah. I, even I was telling you, I was like most people will not yeah. pass on the first try, but you'll after you take it, you'll get an idea of what kind of questions they're asking, so you'll be better prepared for your second one. And, and when, you, when I heard that you did on your first try, I was still in shock for a few days. I was like, how is this possible? <laughs> yeah. Well, and especially when I got my results, they don't give you the percentage of pass, but they tell you if you're at target or above target. And I reached above target on two of the major, which is wow. people is 42% and process is 40, 50%. And then business environment was 8%. So I got above target between the two major ones mm. and the business environment I got below, but that made sense because I haven't been in a, in a work environment in over six years. I work from home remotely. So I traveled and I go on site for projects, but I don't actually go into an office. So that those questions were the the ones that kind of tricked me up because I was like, oh yeah, I haven't been in a office environment in a minute. I'm not sure what I would do today. What ro- old Rose would do is totally different than what what the PMBOK, which is a PMP, wants you to um, answer. Um, you were just talking about that you can be a PIMP, like a pimp. Yeah. I just realized that you can be a pimp for a PMP. Exactly. That's what I mean. Yeah. By. Mm-hmm. I'm like, let's just rebrand that word because yeah. it's got such a negative connotation, and let's make it into something more um, g- great. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, let's get into here. So you've been a project manager for several years yep. now, right? Yeah. So why did you decide to do the PMP and why now? Okay. So, and I'm going to be really honest and I'm transparent, authentic with um, our viewers. So yeah, I've been doing project management on and off for over six years. I, I moved into different positions, which was strategy. Um, I was a digital strategy manager for a moment and then I came back to project management. I do actually like strategy and that is where I want to um, go. But what happened is I started noticing the last, I'd say nine months, you know, the decline, the big layoffs in tech. I started picking up that as on LinkedIn. I started paying attention that they're doing major tech layoffs and I'm in tech. And I was like, Oh, they do layoffs. All I have is my word to say that I am a project manager at this organization. What really proves that I am a project manager. And so I was, my strategic thinking hat came on and I said, why don't you go get certified so that if something happened and I did lose my job, I would at least have the certification that I would probably be able to get a job quicker if with quicker with having that certification. So that was the motivating factor behind why I went and got my um, PMP certification. Okay. Thanks for clearing that up. Mm -hmm. But would they not have looked, let's say if you were to get laid off and you've got all this years of experience working at that company, would that not suffice though? Um, I think it, it would probably would, but you know, there's not like, there's over, over 1 million people in the entire world that have their PMP certification, only 1 million, only 1 million. So it tells you that a lot of people are, are afraid. And I mean, I was afraid for a long time. If it wasn't for you two telling me you got this, you can do this. Who knows if I would have gone this far? You know what I mean? Like I was thinking about when I first had my job interview with the organization, this part of the organization I'm with, my manager had said to me that the VP had said to me, do you have your PMP? And I was like, I don't. And he kind of looked at me like, Oh, like you should have that. Mm-hmm. So I realized that moving forward, organizations are going to want to see, do you have something to prove to us that you can do this job? It just, it proves them that you understand the fundamentals. Exactly. Of what's going on. So we're not like yeah. teaching you from scratch. Like even right. you've done the job, you know, in certain roles, like people give themselves other titles. So people can be a project manager anywhere and they're not really actually doing the actual right. project mm-hmm. management work. Because like you're saying, if you did the PMP, being a project manager is like intense. There's yeah. a lot of processes I need to follow, a lot of stuff because you end up being responsible for a lot of things that yep. the project goes sideways. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And what I will say is they call it project management, but it should just be called people management because you are really managing people day in, day out to ensure that they do their tasks. Mm-hmm. Like the software developer, the product, and making sure everyone is doing their task because you are, like Al said, the one responsible mm-hmm. for the entire project's fruition. You're like an adult babysitter. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. why I used to call people. So people mm-hmm. was like, what do you do? I'm like, I'm an adult babysitter. 
Yeah. Okay. Okay. So how did you prepare for the exam? Okay. So here is where I, I have my notes here. So I want to make sure I don't miss anything here to give everybody the, the good understanding of what, how it took me a while to prepare for this. So let me get, okay. By the way, if you want to take your party uh, headband out, you can now. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. I'll Thank use you. it on the next episode. Thanks. Okay. All right, so um, I started with taking this course on Coursera, and it's called the Google Project Management course. Um, that was It's about three to six months. Um, because I was a project manager, I was able to get through it in, in about three months. Um, but that sets the foundation. And uh, you don't have, when you do project management, you're not, you don't have to just apply for project management. You can be a product owner. You can be a portfolio manager. You can be a program manager. Like it's, it's kind of a, a window of things to do. So that course really helped me understand because let's be real. Google is larger than life and everyone wants to work at Google. So taking their program helped me understand how they want a project manager to be. Okay. So that was last year that I took that course and it ended just before Christmas. And then I thought, okay, I've got some time, but I had a lot of projects started coming in. So I, I was like, I don't have enough time to prepare for it. So I gave myself like a month off. And then, um, in February, I kind of kept saying to you guys, I think I should do it. It's right. Like I really should do it. And you guys were like, yeah, you should do it. And so then this was my preparation. It took me about five weeks and I went really hard, yeah. really hard. You studied day. like a madman. Yeah. <laughs> And so I started with the PIMBOK, um, which is a project management professional book. It's the seventh edition. It's the newest one. And you can get that online. So I read through that for that entire book because the Google project management course was good to set you up for how Google wants you to be a project manager, not necessarily what P, um, PMI wants you to answer the questions. It's very different. That's what people didn't realize. They have a certain philosophy that they want you to go by and they want you to answer the questions how they are training you to Google how Google no works. like uh, PMI like oh, so got yeah it. yeah it's very and different. that's Project Management Institute right? yes okay. exactly so after the Pimbok uh, seventh edition book you go through that what I did was I signed up for Andrew Ramdial's PMP prep course and that's on Ude Udemy and that's a thirty five hour um, course but he prepares you specifically for the exam like Google prepared me to how to be a project manager and a program manager but this course specifically program sets you up to understand how you will pass that exam mm -hmm. and what to prepare for that exam okay and where did you find this information online yep all okay. online yep and so I took that um, course, which was very helpful. Like he really was kind of helping you understand you've got to have an agile manifest mindset. And agile manifesto is a, is a way of doing PMP that was, I guess, invented back in 2001. And that's how they really want us to shift our mind. Like I'm a traditional project manager. It's a very boomer generation of, you know, here's your product at the end, where agile is very much of increments. So let's have you do a little bit of time to see it. So like if Ange said to me, came to us and said, hey, I want you to, build me a car and we were like okay what color do you want i want black and i want it to look like a tesla and you and i just go and build that car and we're like here you go she's like that's not what i had in mind i wanted this so instead of building it we'll say stages here Ange, we've we've built the engine hey Ange, here's the first iteration of it here's the second so that you can be a part of right. it right to the end and that sets up your product to be successful. Mm -hmm. So I really liked that, mm -hmm. that, um, aspect. And that's how my mindset mm -hmm. is people over processes working yeah. with your, your customer, um, in every aspect of the project to make sure that they get exactly what yes. they want. That so also probably saves companies a lot of money right? as well, right? Yeah. Cause if you're delivering a product at the end result, they're not yeah. happy with it. You can catch it when it's stage one, two or mm -hmm. three, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's more, yeah. Cause in phases you need to do that. Cause then maybe this, we have to make adjustments or we found that there's glitches. So I think that's just like, yeah, the standard that what people should be doing. Right. But it also ends up being more costly and longer yes. because right. there's a lot more people involved, a lot more changes. So it's like here, like when you guys say we want something, we do a, a, a version of an edit and then you, you'll say, no, we need to make this change. You make that change. Right. And then sometimes you're at some point you just say, this is what it's going to be right. and we have to move forward. Otherwise we're going to sit here and keep making changes. So, well, and I think what the biggest thing I took from that, what they're saying was like the cost might be higher here, but when it goes out to the customer and you have all these malfunctions, that yeah. cost is much more bigger because you got warranty issues. You got reach refund issues. got so many more problems that come yeah. after. So yeah. it is like, people don't think about like, Oh, I don't want to spend the money, but you're going to end up spending the money. Exactly, if you don't do yeah. it right the first time. You'd rather time. just take a little bit more time exactly. and do it slower, but do it right yeah. and then have a better yeah. okay. product. So after I, I took that course, um, I moved on, to David McLaughlin. He is 
awesome. He's got a YouTube channel where he does just does all uh, PMP stuff. Oh, wow. He's super. And so what he, what I did with his, he's got two um, seven hour videos that I went through. Um, and he goes over the questions and the answers to prepare you. Those questions that you're going to see are not what you're going to see on the exam. They're far more easier. But what you why you want to watch him is because he explains why this isn't going to work or why this is going to work. He gives you all the breakdowns of um, helping you understand. He does it in such a great way. And so I watched both of those. He did one on just the regular Pinbock edition questions, and then he did a, a set on agile questions. And I found that that really helped my mind to really understand how I've got to think going into this exam. Um, and he also does um, the, the seventh edition Pinbock bo uh, book. He does a whole one hour episode. What's of What's Pinbock? Pinbock. So it's the project management book of knowledge. Oh, and okay. so every year they come out with a new edition. So this year we're on the seventh edition. Okay. Mm. And so it's a little thinner, but it's uh, all the information that you need to understand, all the processes. Like the terminology. Yeah, like, you know, you started projects, you're, you got your, your initiation, then you got your planning, then you got the actual monitoring control, like all those phases that you need to understand too okay. for project management. So those were two of his. And then the, the big, big thing for me that I think really set me up for success was Study Hall. So Study Hall is from PMI Institute. You've got to pay for this uh, separately. I think I paid $79, but it gives you uh, five exam um, exams, like sample exams. And that mm -hmm. was the closest because I did take a couple other ones, which I won't bombard you with because I don't think they, they uh, gave me what I needed. But the Study Hall prepared you because you were like, oh man, this is tough. And there's just, they, it's trickery. They're trying to trick you. Mm. They got to get you to go back. So the study hall was very, very helpful. Um, the only thing I did wrong was when I was doing the study hall questions, cause there's 180 questions and you got four hours is I would pause it, go to the bathroom, come back, you know, get my coffee and then do the next 60 questions. That doesn't happen in the real world. You don't get that luxury. Mm -hmm. So you have to, I would say to do this and really prepare yourself. Like you're actually mm -hmm. at the center. Right, yeah. doing, Cause That's you can't pause and play when you're mm -hmm. writing no. the exam. Mm -hmm. And let me tell you, I am an anxiety person. My anxiety kicked in the morning of my exam and I was like, Oh no, I got to go to the bathroom and, and there's no pause button here you have to get up and run outside go pee come back while your time is going okay oh. so those were some of the preparation things that you did oh yes okay yes now what i want to ask you is in a uh, world actually before you go with that yeah. let me explain one more thing so you have to do an application with a pmi as well you um because they're not they, i can tell you all the stuff but if you actually don't pass the application you might not be able to do all of this oh, that, yeah okay. so in order to apply to be a, a, a pmp you have to have either a bachelor's degree in three years of project management experience or you have to have if you have no bachelor's degree then you have to have five years experience and you've got to prove to PMI how you are a project manager then once they approve you then you can set the uh, date for writing your exam so if you have a bachelor's degree and you have project management experience do they verify that information with your employer or do they just take your word for it okay so this is funny because um, it asked me to sign up with my LinkedIn so I'm assuming they must have gone through my LinkedIn to look at to my thing high. and I heard from a few people was there was a few people who didn't pass but lied and put on their LinkedIn that they did pass and PMI went and investigated and, um, sent them like a, you know, like, like a cease and desist. Yeah. Yeah, their, yeah. Yeah. Wow. So they, they, they go hunting on people's they LinkedIn should, to see. Yeah. That's why when I put my picture, I was like, here's my certificate. Here's my certificate. If they I'm ever go lying. back and look. Yeah. 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 So yeah. people who lie about it, they, they don't, they take that very seriously. Right. And that's not being authentic. Yeah. Right? Especially on something on that level when everyone knows if you're PMP certified, you know, a certain baseline. If you didn't pass that, then you don't know the baseline. Right. And I think that's probably yeah. what those people who got caught. It's yeah. usually somebody in the company thinking, I don't think you're Especially talking Especially when it about comes to credentials and things like that. Why are you going to lie about that? It's That's an important yeah. piece. Because of not you, when you get the certification, you get usually a salary upgrade. Of course, but and that you but get that, yeah. But that also comes along with you know the standard. So if something right. ever happened, they're gonna say, "Well, how would you not know this? You're PMP certified." Right. And then they would right. recall that and yeah. say that. Yeah. Um, okay, so we know that we live in a world that's full of distractions. Uh, you know, whether your phone pings or there's a, you know uh, a movie or a show, something to watch or outside noise. So how did you fight the all the distractions and all the background noise to stay focused and to study? Yeah, that's a great question, Ange. Yeah, um, I was very, I'm, I was very motivated um, to get this done. I really wanted to. I've been hee hawing about it for five years to do it, and so um, I think I'm in a place in my life where I have much more discipline and I have much more, much more self control. So yeah, I gave up 
a lot of movies for those four weeks. You know, mm -hmm. the first week I was like, yeah, I study two hours and then I'll go with you guys, do something fun, whatever. But the last four weeks, I really buckled down and I set time every single day, every evening from like five to eight. I was just, and then the last week was like seven, eight hours in the evening weekends. Mm -hmm. I gave up a Friday, Saturday, Sunday, four weeks in a row. And that's why I was able to pass, I think, on the first attempt. It was because I did, I really took this seriously and I really put in the effort. So it was one of those things where I thought, okay, if I don't pass, I'm going back again. But given the amount of time and dedication I've put into this, I feel like I deserved passing in the first round. Yeah. So a lot of self-discipline. Yep. You turned on your D&D &D on your oh, mobile yeah. device. Oh, yes, yeah. yes, yes. Everything. But And I mean, I'm also someone like you guys know that I take on a lot of things and I can juggle a lot of different things. I'm really good at, at doing that. Like the podcast is like, okay, the podcast stuff has to be done Friday, five to nine. But Saturday morning, eight to four has to be the exam preparation. And then like I had to make sure I had a calendar of every single time because I didn't want this to fall behind and I didn't want my day job mm -hmm. to fall behind. You had a lot of structure. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Um, okay. So when you went and wrote the exam, walk us through when you get there, is this a, a physical, uh, where, you know, you're writing it down with a old school pencil and paper, and then you feed it through the machine, or is this like a digital screen or like where you go in and have computers and you're writing the exam? That's a great question. So there's two ways to do it. You can actually do it at home now remotely where you've got your camera turned on and then so there's proctored proctored. Yeah. We'll be watching. But what I read online where a lot of people were saying that, that if you're internet failed or something happened, that's a you problem. Like you have to reschedule and pay the exam oh. fee again and do it all over. So people were advising, go in, go in person. So I found, uh, there's a university that's only about 10 minutes from my house and they had the Pearson, who is the company that, um, does these exams. So I went in person, uh, that morning and, uh, you know, you walk in, they, they, they pat you down. Like it's a full fledged, like lift your hair up. Let's mm -hmm. look at your neck, take off your watch, oh, wow. um, lift up it's your like pants. TSA. Yeah. Wow. Like they're everything like lift up your back and they wanted to make sure you had nothing mm -hmm. going and you have a locker, you lock all your stuff in there and you mm -hmm. just got to have your ID with you at all times. And then your key, um, you can't take any food in there. No drink inside. If you want your glass of water, you come back outside. There's a wow. little, yeah, they were mm -hmm. very strict about that. So this is an invigilated exam and how many uh, other students were writing the exam? I don't know about who else is writing a PMP exam because that there's that you don't know. Everyone's in their own little cubicle. There's people writing exams, but they could be writing all different types of exams. Oh, so okay. that oh. I don't know. Okay. Um, I, when I, when I got in there again, um, so two of the really, they're really nice uh, front desk people were like, oh, you're here for the PMP exam. Yeah. I heard it's really hard. I was like, Damn. like that right mm -hmm. there in the morning. I'm like. No, I don't want to hear. Yeah, yeah I thought so about it. For the but every person that comes here and walks out says, that was so hard. I'm like, dang it. Like, yeah. I don't want to hear this right now. So um, as I started, I was like the first, uh, you know, 30 questions. I was like, okay, I, I, I know this. Mm -hmm. I know this. This is good. I'm, I feel confident. It's always down to the last two questions that you would say, I would do this, but I'd also do this. And then you've got to kind of, so that happened the first 30, 40 minutes. The problem is that they have, it's a four hour exam and they don't write it out in the corner as four hours. It's in minutes. So you've got to calculate 60, 121, 82, 40. Okay. 240. Okay. And you got to keep calc. So I got really like good at the first half. And then I had a couple math questions. So they do some questions where they want you to calculate how much money you have left. If this project is over budget, mm -hmm. over schedule. So I started writing the notes down, do my thing. And I look up, I go, Oh, just lost like 19 minutes on this one oh, question. Wow. Oh my God. And so I quickly I exited just and I just moved. Me. And then my screen went black. I was going to ask you about, did you encounter any technical glitches? While Let me writing? tell you, my anxiety is already going. My heart is racing and I'm like, oh my God, there's still 90 questions. I've got to, oh my God. And I'm freaking out and I'm freaking. And you know when you freak out, you can't comprehend the question anymore. Yeah. So I'm reading the question and I'm like. Because you're rattled. Yeah, rattled. I'm like, what did they just say again? Oh my God. And so then I, the second time the screen goes black, I'm like, okay, what is happening here? And I'm losing time as that screen goes black. It's not you, the time okay. freezes. Did you call the person to come? come so the third look? time happened, I got up and I ran and I go, I need you to come help me. The screen's going black. And she's like, okay, okay, calm down. I said, like, no, 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 I can't. I'm losing minutes. Like I'm losing time. She's like, okay. So she came and rebooted it. And she's like, you're, you're back at your time. I'm like, yeah, but but that caused me anxiety. Like the mm. black screen caused me to get stressed out. I lost internal momentum, internal yeah. confidence, which by the way, I probably should have just said, I'm freezing this exam now. Like I should have just said, but I was like, I'm already here. You persevered. persevered. Yeah, you persevered. Yeah. I'm already here. And then at that point I was like, while you're rebooting, I'm going to go run pee. I mm. run, I probably went to the restroom like 
five times during my exam. They give you two 10 minute breaks, which I didn't realize that two 10 minute breaks are a part of the four oh. hour exam. I thought it was four so hours. So you really have like three hours. Yeah, basically. Mm -hmm. I did not know. I'm sitting there walking around with my banana and getting my fuel back up. Like, oh, this is good. Not knowing that that 10 minutes is a part of the so four hours. I would say oh, it's safe to say to people out there, plan it to say you're taking that exam based off three hours. You count that one hour of yeah. like extra time, yeah. lost and, time. And once you, so this in, in three increments, 60 questions at all. So once you're done the first 60 questions, you can't go back and be like, oh, I want to go back in review. the beginning. You have that, um, that chance at that moment to go review. So I had flagged a few of my questions that I wasn't sure about. And then once I reviewed it, it says once you submit it, then you get that 10 minute break, which I would still say to take, maybe take five minutes of it because you need to walk away from yeah. it. It's so intense. Mm -hmm. The questions are so long. Um, they're so wordy. You're trying to figure out what they're trying to do. Is this traditional? Is this hybrid? Is this agile? Like they're really trying to trick you there. So 180 questions in four hours. I gave them the feedback in the end saying, you need to add an extra hour and a half mm -hmm. to this. Like, and you were, were you wearing your watch? So were you nope. able to, oh, you no, I had to base watch. it off that time. So I had to keep calculating. So 240 mm. minutes. Okay. 209 minutes. So, so like you, you can't even wear your watch when you're writing nothing. this? Oh, that's terrible. No jewelry, no watch, yeah. no phone, nothing. I think with technology, people have ways to get, get you answers. If it's on your phone, someone could be sending you True, messages or answers. True, but if you just have one of those analog, but um, they don't know, school, right? You could um, be hiding watches. something in there. It could be an earpiece sending you a, a, oh, yeah, she checks, she checks your ear. She, they check everything of you. Wow. They check everything. So they they yeah. mean business. They mean so business. I guess maybe that's why it's not just hard because of the material, but they also want you to do it in a certain amount of time. time. So right. that's what probably makes it hard. That. You don't have a, all day to go and finish no. it. you got a very right. tight timeline. Yeah. That makes okay. sense. Okay, so let's go. Let's go final question okay. here, Rose. Uh, what advice would you offer to anyone who is interested in obtaining a PMP certification? What would you say? Do it. Do it. Uh, not, not even just for the pay and the title for yourself, the amount of knowledge that I got, I was like, man, my organization's not doing a lot of these things, but I agree with a lot of these things. So, um, definitely because I, again, I was a traditional, um, very traditional and I was trying to, in my own way, become more of an agile, um, a PM, but not, I didn't have the understanding of it. I just knew a little bit. Taking this course really helped me understand, you know, in certain situations, yes, you want a traditional, um, and, but there's a lot of situations where you really want an agile. And then there's some, some situations where you want to merge the two together, but doing this course, um, writing this exam, I, the knowledge I have, no one can take that away from me and no mm. one can take that away from you. So I'm not, I wasn't so fixated on, on the certification and the, you know, you'll get a salary bump. It was more of like, I have this information that anywhere I go, I can be a project manager. I know the tools and the techniques and the processes it takes to be, to have a successful project. You feel like you earn your stripes. I like. earn my stripes. I earn my stripes. It felt great. Okay. Well, and yeah. I actually want to tell everybody too, have a good support system that will help because there was times where I doubted myself a lot. And I'm very grateful to having amazing siblings who are my cheerleaders, my ride or dies. Every time I would call and say, do you guys think I should just not do this? And I'm like, no, you've gone so far. Of course you want to do it. Like, and the night before Anne started the group chat of, you know, at Rose, we got you, you got this, you're going to do well. And you know, ship, everyone was messaging me. You got this good luck on your exam. That makes you feel even more. And the morning of the exam, the little thoughts come in your mind. I went for the my self morning doubt. self doubt. I went for my morning walk. Um, Sia, Sia's music was my, um, uh, she was my go-to every single day. Mm -hmm. I was like, cause I'm the champ and I, you know, and so in the morning I was going and that little voice was saying, you're not going to pass. I go, don't do this. I don't have time for you little voice right now. Mm -hmm. We're going to go in guns blazing right. and let's just see what happens. Okay. Challenge the amazing, thought, okay. Rose, good for you. Those little self doubts start always come creeping in, right? It's always trying to hold you back yeah. from conquering something. And can I tell you the thought that crossed my mind that morning? I yeah. was like, man, we got to get uh, Conor McGregor on this podcast. I want to know what thoughts crosses his mind the day he's going to go fight. I want to know what he tells himself the day he's going to go into this big fight. I literally was like, I wrote down, dear God, dear universe, I really want to have a hashtag goal interview Conor McGregor. That's amazing. Yeah. Okay, well, as we wrap it up in our celebration episode, you know what got a big sister's happy or kick it up? Okay. This is a big achievement. Thank you. How you going to celebrate? What are you going to yeah, do? You're going to buy you yourself do? something? <laughs> You know me, I'm on to the next thing already. <laughs> That's me. No, no gonna... you guys have been great celebrating. They've been great. My family's been great. My parents have been great. I'm not good at celebrating and I should get better at that. So thank you guys. You know what? You got to sometimes pause in the moment yep. and enjoy and seize the moment yeah, before you right. go on to something next. You're right. Mm -hmm. Woo -hoo! Woo -hoo! Mama didn't raise a quitter. That's right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So with that said, we are closing off how I 
passed my PMP exam on the first try. Mic drop. Do you think I passed the PMP exam because I'm so excited yeah, about thanks, it Yeah, thanks, Andrew. Right? your energy. But that's what we do. We are right. each other's hype people, and yeah. you got to have hype people in your life, and, yes. and that's the name of the game, and you got to have your cheerleaders, and you got to have your support system because uh, anytime you do something, it's not I. It's always we. about the team, yes. right? It's a team effort. So with that said, if you are thinking about writing the PMP exam or challenging the PMP exam, you heard it here first. You can do it. It is possible just with a lot of self-discipline. So with that said, please think about your win of the week or a self-discovery like I discovered. I share the same birthday with the 14th Dalai Lama. So go and find something that's just going to make you excited and very happy and just keep going and keep moving. So the tribe is going to be back next week. Check us out on all of our social channels. Hit that subscribe button because we are so cute. And let's share, get on this journey of transformation and self-discovery. So until next week, please take care. And the tribe is signing off. Bye for Bye. now. See you.